Beware of investing in condos, townhomes, or even single-family homes in an association. Hopefully you're watching this video before buying one of those properties, but even if you've already purchased one, you're probably beginning to already experience some of the pitfalls. Hi, I'm Phil Pustiowski with FreedomMentor.com, arguably one of the most experienced real estate investors alive with over 2,000 deals under my belt. I am a mentor and coach to many of the most successful real estate investors all across North America, best-selling author of two books. The first, How to Be a Real Estate Investor, and the second one is Real Estate Investing Gone Bad. And In fact, in this book, I actually talk about a deal that went bad that involved a condo. This video will go into much greater detail. Uh, this is the number one YouTube channel for real estate investing worldwide. And part of the reason for that is because I share the signal, what I call the truth, and not all the noise that you see out there, because there's a lot of garbage out there. You know when you're watching my videos, you are watching the pure truth of what really goes on in this business. Beware of condos, townhomes, and single family homes and associations. Let's start with condos. Condos. They might make sense for a developer who is trying to build more units per uh, section or per area, but for real estate investors buying individual condos, it can be a massive problem. There are all kinds of ways to go wrong. Let's get started with the extra costs. So these would be costs above and beyond if you bought a normal single family home. Uh, the first is going to be the monthly HOA dues, or the monthly dues. I call them HOAs, homeowners associations or associations. These monthly dues, um, you're going to know about it when you buy the property how much they are, but this can really cut into your cash flow. And it's also important to note that they're always going to go up. Your monthly dues will never go down. And in fact, what some of these associations will do is they will, in order to increase dues without making people upset, they will promise things like they're going to rebuild this or they're going to fix that, and then they get the extra dues increased and then they don't change anything. I had one example of a property I had where the uh, HOA dues were $75 a month, which was really good. It was actually a townhome, not a condo. And uh, that made it very uh, appealing to buyers because it was so much less expensive than everybody else out there. And uh, they pushed to have it bumped up to $150 a month, which was a huge jump. Uh, but they got it passed because they, were going, they promised to put a huge fence, a big wall around the property that never got built. So monthly dues, it's going to go up. You don't know when, but just expect it to. It's going to cut into your cash flow. The next thing, in the, and perhaps the most scary of it all, is what's called an assessment or assessments. What these are, are above and beyond the monthly dues, even though the monthly dues are supposed to not only cover all the costs, but also kind of build a little bit of a savings account, the assessment pays for things like new roofs. Um, I just got an assessment on one of my properties for $4,500, and it was to hook into the sewer system um, as opposed to what it currently was on, which was on a septic. So uh, every single unit owner got to pay $4,500. Now what happens if you don't pay these bills? Oh, I'll tell you what they do. They foreclose. That's right. Associations have incredible levels of power. They can foreclose on you if you are a couple of months past due on your monthly or if you don't pay your assessment. And another thing that they're doing these days is the credit bureaus. So they're actually reporting to credit bureaus, I just read about this, with several different association systems. This is serious. You are paying for whether it be the lawn care or the pool maintenance, and if you don't pay, it's as powerful as not paying your property taxes or not paying your mortgage. It's serious. Okay, so the extra cost can completely demolish any cash flow, but we're just getting started. So let's say you bought this condo and through assessments and through monthly dues, you're making no money. Now you're thinking, I just want to get rid of this thing. Oh, guess what's waiting for you? Rules, rules, and more rules. I'll give you some examples of some rules. First right of refusal. I had a great deal one time, and the, uh, the deal was so good that the uh, first right of refusal, the developer took the deal. Ouch. Meaning, the, uh, the, the association, which was controlled by the developer, the association had the first right of refusal to buy any property before a buyer bought it. Ouch. Okay. Um, the next, uh, so I, there's that first right of refusal. Another one that I dealt with one time was 
that they had to approve the buyer. And if the buyer was an investor or was not what they wanted, they could just tell the buyer to hit the road. Now, they couldn't uh, break any of those rules such as race, religion, those kind of things. But they find a way to stay within the rules and still uh, discard buyers. So uh, they, could, they could discard buyers. Another one, if you're trying to get rid of your property that you may have to deal with, are some of the rules related to materials. Like I had this condo one time where um, the person I had bought it from, he had a water leak and so some of the, uh, the flooring was messed up. It was nice wood flooring. He, and anyways, he, he sent a contractor in there to fix it. Well, they had to approve the contractor and the way that the contractor gets approved was that a contractor had to go through a one-month orientation, $2,000 deposit, increased insurance. It was bonkers. Anyways, the person this previous seller had hired was not approved, and so they slapped this um, assessment against him, and basically had to, um, this was part of why I got the deal, but I had to rip up all of the old flooring, the brand new flooring he put in, because it had the wrong underlayment, because they wanted it to be a quarter inch thicker. Uh, and again, as a condo, if you're you know on the upper level and you have uh, the wrong underlayment, it can make a lot of noise for the person below you. So they can dictate what kind of materials you use, can dictate what kind of contractors you use. Uh, this particular uh, condo I was, I was referencing, they also had a rule that only one person can move out per day. 500 units in this high-rise condo, and there's, there's several elevators, but uh, one elevator had to be used strictly by the moving company to get everything moved back and forth, and so you had to get on their schedule, which in my case, the deal, it took three more extra weeks to get on the schedule to move out. Ouch. And so these rules are absolutely bonkers some of the time, and they make it very difficult for you to sell a property, and or they make it very... Um, undesirable for a new buyer. Another example would be if you want to turn into a vacation rental. They may have a rule that you can't do that. So these associations have rules, rules, and more rules that are just absolutely out of this world ridiculous. And typically the people who are creating the rules are number one, the original developer. They're going to set rules that make their, their situation wonderful. Like the, a lot of times developers make it very difficult to do a resell because if they still have new units in the, in the development, they're going to make your life miserable if you're trying to resell that, that property because they're busy competing against you and they're going to beat you every time. Uh, but also you have these people that have absolutely no other time on their hands and so they're the ones that go to all the board meetings, they become the president and then they just spend their entire life trying to create more and more bureaucracy. All right, so extra costs, rules, 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 and then I'm going to do one more here, and I'm just going to call it lending problems. So the next issue you're going to deal with when you try to resell a condo is all the lending problems that can come with it. Number one, the HOA could be broke, or they could have uh, financial problems, or just not have the financial ratios that the conventional lenders want to see. So uh, maybe they're not collecting as many monthly dues as they should be. That happened a lot in 2010 to 2012 when we had the, the market collapse. So if, but if they don't meet their ratios, uh, financial ratios, most of the conventional lenders won't lend on it. And so you have to go non-conventional and the pricing of the loan is more. Uh, another problem you could have from a lending perspective is just the ratio of, of uh, owner-occupant to, uh, to non-owner-occupant. And so if you have a bunch of investors buying condos, this is completely out of your control. You might be paying your dues, following the rules. Um, if the ratios get out of whack, then a lot of lenders won't lend on that uh, condo because they don't like the ratio. And there's more. Uh, I got a, a friend of mine who's doing a deal right now where um, trying to it's, it's a listing, trying to sell this condo. And the problem is that the insurance is not adequate. The association level insurance is not adequate. So uh, none of the conventional lenders will lend on it. And the association is basically saying, we're not going to pay more for insurance. You need to go find somebody else to lend you money or pay cash. So you see all these problems? And we're just getting started. This is just condos. So great lesson here is this. Be very aware. You need to know exactly what the rules are, exactly what the costs are. Here's another big tip. Before you buy... You need to have the seller put in writing and the HOA association, the president, everybody, get them all to put in writing that they have no idea of any assessments upcoming in the future. Make them put that in writing. Because the way the laws work is on an estoppel letter, they have to put if there's any active assessments, but not if there's any upcoming. So what sometimes condo sellers will do is they'll get rid of a condo because they know that a $10,000 assessment's coming in. Another thing to be aware of and to really keep an eye on is this. 
I talked about how developers are always going to get the best of you if they have units available. Anytime there's a unit still available by the original developer, you've got to be very, very careful if you try to sell that. I had a deal one time where what the developer was doing was giving two full years of free HOA, and the HOA dues at that time on that deal were $800 a month. They were giving two years of $800 a month for free. The thing was, that didn't show as a concession on the MLS. It didn't show anywhere. It was the secret concession. So what was happening was the, the new-built condos were beating all of the existing ones because they were basically giving what amounted to a $20,000 uh, concession, which wasn't showing up on the MLS. So when you looked at the comps, you never noticed. Yeah, I mean, there are all kinds of pitfalls. Please make comments below if I've forgotten some because I've, I've, I've done so many deals involving condos and townhomes and others that are in associations and these are just some of the highlights of just the condo side of things. All right, let's get to townhomes. Townhomes suck as investments. First of all, they're undesirable. They're undesirable because they're not really a condo and they're not really a house. You know, it, it's a what happens, the psychology of most buyers out there is that they want that single family home with that white picket fence. Or if they want to live downtown or oceanfront, they want a condo. But the town home is kind of in the middle. And it's the worst of both worlds. So it's undesirable. Now, yes, there are a few buyers out there that, that would prefer a town home. But the vast majority of buyers don't. So oftentimes you will experience where a motivated seller wants to get rid of their property and it turns out to be a town home. Dun, dun, dun. And as soon as you see that, that's when you're just like, oh. Now, a lot of times town homes are developed by uh, developers that can't make money by putting single family homes on the land because they just can't make the numbers work. They, you know, they compress a bunch more units with town homes. So they get rid of the new ones because they offer all kinds of incentives and it's brand new. And usually townhomes are less expensive than single family homes. And so if you're in a really high priced zip code area, sometimes just to get your kids into that school, people might buy that brand new townhome. But the chickens will come home to roost. Because when they go to sell that thing, nobody wants it. Unless the price is drastically dropped. So number one, it's extremely undesirable. Number two, we still have this problem that most, if not all, have associations. And the ones that don't have associations are usually uh, their own set of problems because the people don't keep up with them and the neighbor to the, uh, to the right or the left is you know, just letting the thing go to pot. Okay, so associations. I, I got a quick story for you. I had this one um, rental townhome. I did it on a rent to own. And... Um, the, the rule was that you had to bring the, the garbage can out to the edge of this road, which is probably about 100 feet away from the house, to where the, uh, the garbage person could pick it up. But you had to bring that back uh, that same day. And if it was still there in the afternoon, they, they would, they'd fine you $25. Uh, well, the way the tenant's schedule was, they'd bring it out, but then they couldn't bring it back till the next day to their work schedule. So they kept getting this $25 fine. And so the tenants are basically saying, I'm not going to pay it. Screw that. Anyways, I, 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 I fought them for a while and I eventually had to evict the tenants. It was awful because of a garbage can not being pulled back till the next morning. Absolutely ridiculous. So associations are not only going to, we already talked about from the condo section, costs, but they got the rules and also they could have those same uh, lending problems as well. So you have the, uh, the worst of both worlds with townhomes and uh, you know there are going to be exceptions. We have made some money on townhomes. But uh, by and large, if you can, don't do deals that are townhomes unless you can steal the property. We'll talk about more of that at the end, this idea of margin of safety. All right, now let's talk about single family homes in an association. Single family homes in an association can still run into problems, even though at least it's a single family home. The first we need to talk about, of course, is the association itself. These associations have all kinds of rules. I did a deal not too long ago where I replaced the roof with the exact same materials that the previous roof had on there. Same make, same color, same model, same everything. And um, I, I was in a hurry and I didn't go to look at the association rules. I knew there were rules related to the roof materials, I just didn't look at them. Turned out they had changed the rules and they had changed what manufacturer and what colors were approved. They had done it, I guess, um, about three months after I'd owned the property. I wouldn't keep an all that good a track of it. 
Anyways, they threatened to have me remove that brand new $9,000 roof and put their own stuff on there, and I had to beg and plead for mercy. Thankfully, they allowed me to keep it on there, um, but it was a close call. They also can dictate not only what roofing materials you put on a property, but what your house color is. They can dictate all kinds of things. If you want to put a garage in, if you want to, anything and everything you can possibly think of on the exterior of the house, uh, a single family home or an association can be uh, restricted. So you need to know that going in. You need to know all the rules. You need to know, uh, just like we talked about on the previous ones, the different, uh, the insolvency issue and all the other things that go along with it because single family homes and associations can also be a massive problem. And also, again, when you go to resell these properties, if the association bill is too high, Sometimes people will buy in a different neighborhood simply because the association is cheaper or they're not just these crazy Gestapo type associations. All right, well, that covers the reason why you have to be so aware of the dangers of whether it's condos, townhomes, or single family homes and associations. What the solution is to doing deals that are in these situations is margin of safety. I have a great video on that subject. It'll be up here in the, in the top corner here. I'll link to that. Take a look at that video so you completely understand the concept of margin of safety. And when you do deals and associations, make sure you have a massive margin of safety because it's not just the cost, it can be the delays. I mean, I remember this one deal with that, that roofing that took up three months of time because they only met once a quarter. Their board did. It was ridiculous. So you've got to be very aware of what's going on, what the rules are, because it can completely ruin you as a real estate investor. And you have now been forewarned of the dangers of investing in condos, townhomes, or single family homes and association. If you've got questions, and I'm sure you do, <laughs> Put them in the comments just below here. Please put other comments as well if you know of other horror stories. And also, if you have an actual success story where the association was wonderful and the dues went down and there were no assessments and you sold it for more because of how wonderful the association was, I'd love to hear that story too. Well, I'm Phil Pustiowski with FreedomMentor.com. I hope you've learned a tremendous amount from this video, and please watch many of my others. If you want to learn more about how you can work with me personally, head to my website, FreedomMentor.com, and check out my apprentice program. Me and a small team of coaches, we work directly with those that want to become A players, um, market-leading real estate investors, and it's wisdom like this and so much more that we're able to share with them, things that would take them 30 to 50 years to learn on their own. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.